Thank you. <laughs> so a picture is worth a thousand words. A picture is worth a thousand words. When you look at this image, what are the first words that come to mind? Romance. Those are great words. This one. Mm. How about this one? <laughs> How about this one? Ooh, great one. So a picture is worth a thousand words. Why should this saying matter to businesses? Do you use photos on your website and social media? Are those photos helping or hurting your business? Which of these is $1,000 a night? The Buckhead Luxury, their words, or the Luxury Home? So this one, show of hands, or this one? They're both $1,000 a night. <laughs> Here's two local restaurants. Which one are we going to choose? Come on, show of hands. Are we going to this one or this restaurant? Your photos can turn people away, which is loss of customers, loss of referrals, trust, credibility, loss of revenue. Or your photos can inspire people to do business with you. Say you need to have surgery. Using these actual photos from LinkedIn and hospital websites, <laughs> let's choose that surgeon. Which one are we gonna go with? The recent graduate? The fisherman yeah. or the lady having drinks at TGI Fridays. <laughs> All too often we choose photos that are eh, good enough. We need a photo so we take a quick snapshot or grab any old photo that's available. Not realizing the message that it's sending. But people just aren't searching for hotels and restaurants and doctors. They're searching for our businesses too. And 80% of people will research you and your company online before making a decision. And on the internet, people don't have to make excuses to walk away and choose someone else. So while it's said you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, the reality is we all do it. It's just how our brains function. Imagine searching for a recipe without the photos. What are we cooking for dinner tonight? It's the photos that inspire us to connect, to learn more. Imagine Amazon without any photos. <laughs> what are we going to buy? It's the photos that connect us, that make us want to click, to learn more, to read more about what is being offered. We all fret over which words are just the perfect words and even which font. I just spent two days picking out a single font for my business card. But we can't spend all our time on one that we completely ignore the other. Your photos are a vital part of your marketing. 90% of information transmitted to our brains is visual. Visual information gets to the brain 60,000 times faster than text. And the deepest part of our brain, the survival part, it is hardwired to form an impression the instant we see someone. Your subconscious brain makes a conclusion about a person in less than one half of one tenth of a second. So how can we win someone over in less than a second? What's gonna make someone searching online stop and the, all of the people that are available and say that they want to do business with you? The simple answer, a connection. People want to do business with people that they like, know, and trust, not faceless websites, especially when it comes to a service-based business. So let's start with your business portrait. It's commonly referred to as a headshot or a profile photo. It is the most important photo on your website and social media 
because it's the photo, the photo that represents you. It's the first thing that people see when they browse your profile, and it's the mental image they are going to recall. Remember, we are hardwired to form an impression the instant we see someone. So let's look at some common missed opportunities that people do with those profile photos. From a psychology standpoint, arms crossed say, I'm closed off. Leaning away says, doesn't care. Too far away hints at insecurity. It's hard to establish trust with this person. We don't like it when somebody's in our personal space, even in a photograph. Too high asserts dominance, while too low shows weakness and lacks confidence. Selfies often have too many distractions, especially the bathroom ones. <laughs> Think about all the information that is in front of our eyes. Color, shapes, lights, movement, words, texture, all vying for our attention. Remember, you have less than a second, and anything that distracts the viewer takes away from you establishing that connection. The opposite of the selfie, the everybody photo. Which one are you? There's no personal connection. And my personal favorite, the disembodied friend. There's no connection because we're all wondering who that person was. And covering our eyes, there's no connection. What are we hiding? And looking away, we tend to follow the gaze of others. And wide eyes, this makes us uncertain and eager. While tired eyes, there's no confidence. It's hard to trust this person. And clothing says so much. This is I would rather be anywhere else than working today. These people would rather be anywhere else than doing business with you. Actual LinkedIn photos. Poor lighting, it creates wrinkles and it ages us and makes us less trustworthy. Nobody wants that. And a fake smile, most people can spot it. It doesn't generate trust. But you have that opportunity to make that connection in less than a second. How do you do that? You do it with your headshot, with that profile photo. You narrow it down to just your head and shoulders because you reduce unnecessary distractions, giving you a better chance of making that instant connection. Remember, it's about you, just you, connecting with your target audience. So look directly into the camera because that communicates credibility. And a warm expression says, I'm open to connection. And a genuine smile makes us more approachable and has been said to generate trust instantly. And good lighting makes us more trustworthy, more approachable, more radiant, and a good photographer can take it a step further. Because while this is reality, that is marketing. Reality, marketing. Reality, marketing. <laughs> we live in a highly competitive world, and what you market with matters. All of your photos, from your headshot to all the photos on your website and your social media, they are a significant part of your marketing strategy. Marketing is about standing out from your competition, connecting with and engaging that target audience, building a brand reputation and boosting your word of mouth, and communicating that you are worth every single dollar that you are charging. The right photos can give you a competitive edge. But you have to make the effort to stand out from the competition and connect with the target audience. Think about this. You make the extra effort when you go on a job interview. You make the extra effort when you go on a first date. Why? 
because we care about the impression that we're giving to the person sitting across from us. Your headshot is that first impression. And online, it represents you 24-7, 365. So you have to choose it carefully. How do you choose just the right headshot? Here's a brainstorming exercise that I do with my clients. For the sake of time, I'll, I'll put this back up at the end so everybody will be able to take a screen capture. But for the sake of time, we're going to narrow this down to just two. I want you to think about your words. Write them down. Put them in your phone. When somebody describes you, when you describe yourself and your business, write down three positive words. I am, fill in the blanks. My business is, fill in the blanks. This is a vital to your marketing. This is what you are wanting to convey to the world. The ones that I most often hear from my clients are, I want to look professional, friendly, and approachable. Those are great words. But your words are going to vary based on your profession, your unique personality, and what it is that sets you apart. For example, a defense attorney might want their words to be confident, no nonsense, and top of their game. Whereas a veterinarian might want theirs to be friendly, respectable, and knowledgeable. Think about it. What are your words? Write them down. Then show that headshot to five to 10 people, preferably your clients, your target audience, even total strangers, people that don't have a vested interest in you. Don't show it to your family and friends. One, they're not your target audience. And two, they're biased by your, their love for you, rightfully so. They're going to tell you what you want to hear. And three, they are not your target audience. Write down all of their words. Make a list of what they see when they look at your photo. Then it's time to tally up the words. Pull back out your words and look at the list. What words did you use and what words did they use? Is there a disconnect? Are you showing the world what you think you're showing the world? You might like your photo, and it might be well lit, but is it sending the right message? Is it connecting with and engaging your target audience? Even the slightest variation in facial expressions can turn people away or inspire them to connect with you. By a show of hands, which one do you prefer? Let's choose a headshot. A, come on, raise them high. Or B, there's no wrong answer here. What if I told you she was a real estate agent? A or B? What if I told you she was a book editor? A or B? How about an attorney? A or B. How many of you changed your opinion based on her profession and her target audience? With every photo that you use on your website and social media, you have to think about your target audience. What's going to connect with them? What's going to engage them? Once you've chosen that right photo, it is time to update it in all the places that your headshot is. It is in more places than you even realize. Customers come to us from different channels, so you want to make sure that you are connecting with them and engaging them no matter how they're finding you. And for those that came in late, we had a little bit of technical difficulty, so the aspect ratio has been changed here, so I'll provide this information later. Let's talk about your about page. You need to have a really good engaging photo on your about page. When somebody lands there, why do they go to your about page? Exactly. Capture them. Don't make them bounce with that photo. Update it on social media. Again, people come to us from all different channels, and you want to make sure that you are connecting with them. Also make sure that it looks good, especially on LinkedIn, that little tiny oval that they give you. Specialty websites. Where do you have your services listed? You want to make sure that you are winning that job that you are far surpassing the competition that is also on there. Extremely important. I cannot stress this enough. If you only take away one thing from this, you have to have an engaging, really, really good headshot on your job proposals. 
because this is how you put yourself in the room, connecting with the person that is making a decision about who to award that job to. And on your reviews, by placing a headshot on your reviews, like the LinkedIn, like the Amazon thing that I showed you earlier, you're increasing the possibility that somebody is actually going to read those reviews. You're increasing your credibility by placing a photo with it. And the all important that you've heard about today, those conversion rates, you're increasing that as well. Your product or service is just one of many the consumer has to choose from. Many of you in this room offer similar services. These are essentially all sodas, and yet they all market themselves differently. One you're sharing with a friend, another you're jumping off of mountains. How are you marketing yourself? Are your photos connecting with and engaging your target audience? It is important that you use images that are relevant and cohesive to your business. These are both clothing companies. Clothing company A is doing a really good job of using relevant and cohesive images. Clothing company B, it's confusing. You should never confuse your target audience. It's important that you use images that show what you offer and the problems that you solve. These are both architects. If you are in need of an architect, architect A is showing you some pretty inspiring photos about what they might be able to do for you. Architect B does not show us even one photo of what he has to offer you. It's important that you use images to inspire that connection and that engagement. This is a heat map. It's a tool used to show user behavior. The red is where the viewer's eyes linger the most. What can we learn from this? We tend to follow the gaze of others. So when you have a headshot and you want somebody to connect with you, where do you look? Directly into that camera. You're inspiring the connection with you. When you have a product or something really important, you turn your body and your head towards that product, like the all-important call to action button. You want to turn and face that call to action button because you're going to create, you're going to increase your conversions. Your contact information is important. Never, ever, ever turn your back on your contact information. You are lowering the likelihood that somebody will actually reach out to you. Your photos should do their job, which is to connect with and engage the viewer. So how can you get those photos? You can hire a professional, you can purchase stock photos, or you can do it yourself. So let's talk a little bit about each of these. So stock photos, there are do's and don'ts of stock photography. First, don't choose cheesy images. They just don't connect with most people. Don't select images for yourself. This is not what we do in an office. That looks more like what we would actually do in an office. So choose images that actually look real. Don't choose random images. This is on over 200 different company websites. While it might work for the travel company, it's kind of confusing for the oil change company. <laughs> do your homework. Right click on that image and find out where else it is on the internet before you purchase it. This photo of the girl in the car is over 300 different company websites, 100 car rental companies, 125 car insurance companies. The whole point of having a website is to say I'm different from my competition. Do business with me. What are you doing if you're using the same images as everybody else? When you right click on her photo, on the stock site, it'll show you all of the other images in case you like that particular model. Over 10,000 different companies are using her as their spokesperson. And I'd be dropping the ball at this point if I didn't explain to you that when you swap out those stock photos with actual images of you and your business, your conversion rates increase. There's study after study after study that shows this. 
The top one is a moving company. These are the people coming into your home, loading up your worldly possessions and leaving your house with them. When they swapped out the stock photo with the real life movers doing that, their conversions went up by over 45%. Your clients are giving you their password, their life, their business, their likelihood. They wanna do business with somebody that they like, know, and trust. The bottom photo was actually confusing. While this laptop is a pretty good stock photo, when you look at a laptop and you're signing up for a conference, would you think this was an online conference? It was an in-person conference. When they swapped the photo out with the previous year's conference photos, their signups went up by over 40%. Just don't choose cheesy stock images. And if you still want to, at least use the ones with Vince Vaughn. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. And do it yourself. Photography is fun. Learning photography is fun. Taking pictures is fun. Who has a cell phone in their pocket? Don't go out and buy expensive equipment. When you're posting images on social media, these things take really, really good pictures. But you have to learn how to do photography, at least the basics. Good lighting and good composition. When I was learning photography, 20 something years ago. They didn't have YouTube. They didn't have all those resources available. You can learn photography for free. Just at least learn the basics. And then learn to look at the details in those photos. What's distracting? What can you eliminate? What's gonna add to the story? What can you put in that photo? Look at the background. Are there palm trees sticking out of the top of people's heads? Is that taking away? And then everybody's, you know, we get in a rush and at the last moment we're posting a blog post and that's why we end up using those really bad images. You can stockpile your own photos. As you go about your day to day and you see something, go ahead and pull out your cell phone and take a moment, walk around, is there a different angle, is there a different approach, something you can add and take that photo. And then hit the favorites button. Later, month from now, when you're going through and trying to find that photo, you don't want to scroll through thousands of images. You already have it. Save yourself time and effort. And then as with anything, just practice, 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 and have fun. Photography is fun. And then if you choose to hire a professional photographer, which I highly recommend for at least your headshots, it's really simple. Make a list of the photos that you need. You need a headshot. It's everywhere. You need something that's going to connect, engage, and show that you're worth what you're charging. How many pages do you have on your website? Four? Okay, now you're up to five photos. There's no excuse. You can knock that out in a couple of hours. Research. Ask around. Who else photos do you like? Find out who they hired. Research the photographer. Actually get on their website. Look at those facial expressions. Do they connect with you? If a photographer ever ask you to smile, gather your stuff and leave. Pretend you have an emergency. It's not your job. It's their job to engage you, to make you comfortable in front of the camera and comfortable with the photo that they're giving you and something that's actually gonna have a genuine expression that's gonna do its job to connect with your target audience. And then get it on the calendar. If you're like me, it doesn't exist unless it's on the calendar. And everybody asks, how long? I've got my headshot. How long should this last me? A good headshot should last you three to five years. So if you can't invest one hour of your time for your business, save time. When you get your photos from your photographer, ask them for the sizes that you're going to need. Don't waste time. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, they all require different sizes. Don't waste your time on it. Have them provide. That's why you're hiring a professional to take care of you. No matter where you get your images from, you really need to seriously look at those photos and say, is this photo going to help me or hurt me before you put it on your website, before you put it on social media? Imagine you're at a networking meeting and somebody pulls you to the side and says, we need to talk. I've been referring my clients to your business. I heard back from a couple of them that they checked out your website and you just didn't look professional. That happened to one of my clients. It is the sole reason they reached out to me and hired me to update their headshots on their website. 
after the photo shoot, they said, you know, would you mind looking at our website and see if there's any other photos that we might need to change out? I looked at their desktop and I looked at their mobile version and I found this on their mobile version. I actually grayed out the name of the company because it's not important, it can happen to any of us. This basically says, you don't own this image, we're gonna keep it watermarked until you pay for it. <laughs> that was on their website for five years. Think about that. Nobody is going to tell you that your images are bad or hurting you. That was a rare unicorn that actually came up to them and told them. Five years it took one person to tell somebody. You have to look at your images honestly and say, should I even be using this for my company? You're the gatekeeper. It's ultimately up to you what you post for your company and what you throw away. So there's a quick checklist we can go through of everything we talked about today. You can do this in a matter of 30 seconds. When you have a picture, quickly do it a once over and decide, are you even going to use that image? Any image. From now on, go through the checklist. But for the sake of today, so everybody's on the same page, think about your hero image. What is that big image on the front of your website that greets visitors? Come on, seriously, everybody think about your image. Everybody have that in mind, what you're currently using? Okay, let's go through the checklist. What is the purpose of that photo? Is it to entertain, educate, inform, inspire, invoke, engage? Is it doing that? Be honest. With that photo in mind, what does it actually say? Is it confusing? Is there a person in it? What is their body language like? What is their facial expression? Is their body towards what you want the viewer to engage with? Are there any distractions? Are there things that should have been eliminated and not in that photo at all? Is that photo on message, cohesive with your brand? Is it going to connect with your target audience? This might work well for a spa, but not so much for an energy drink company. <laughs> that photo that you have in mind, is it grabbing people's attention or is it making them bounce? Have you looked at both the desktop and the mobile version to make sure that something hasn't gone wonky? Words over people's faces squished like today's presentation, which I have no control over, but have you looked at both of them? And then something we haven't thought about or talked about, have you thought about the all important SEO, that search engine optimization, naming and tagging your photos properly? Nobody searches for IMG underscore whatever dot JPEG they search for your specific type of business or service. What are those key words that people use to find you on the internet? You need to name your photos that before you ever upload them to the internet. What are your key words? Get them into the file name. So then by the time you do get it up to your WordPress site, you're entering those same key words into that all important alt text that alt text improves your SEO and the accessibility of your website. More people than you realize use Google Images when searching for a specific type of business, service, or product. Naming and tagging your photos can actually help your business show up in those all important search results. So that by the time somebody does land on your website, like restaurant A, you're actually inspiring that connection instead of like restaurant B, where you want to bounce and go back to restaurant A. <laughs> You're not hitting them with a wall of text, like the recipe website that I showed you, or Amazon without any photos. While words are important, it's the photos that are gonna connect, inspire that engagement. What were those words that you thought about earlier? Are your photos expressing that and conveying those words? A picture is worth a thousand words, but make sure yours are also worth more customers, more referrals, and more revenue. What you show the world is ultimately up to you. 
So you have to choose your photos with care because they market you everywhere. And as you go about your day to day, always remember a picture is worth a thousand words. What do you want your business photos to say? Thank you. This is the checklist bigger. <laughs> I'm going to grab a drink and then we'll start with questions if anybody has any. And then this is the, oh, go back. OK, got it. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Some of them, yes. And the website's a whole other issue. I'm not a WordPress person, so I have managed to erase my website twice this week. Thank God for backups, but it's a year old backup. Jason is going to be working on getting my. We'll have them up and running in a I actually built the website. This is the third time I built it, and I erased it twice. So, a little stressful, but the images on there are still really good. And on the blog, I do have some of these slides that I went ahead and quickly, most of them got erased, but <laughs> I tried this morning in the parking lot to at least get some of them back up there for you. And this is the longer ones that I do with my company when we're going over brainstorming sessions with clients. We do this along with the story brand. I know you've probably heard this repeatedly today, the Donald Miller book, story brand. If you haven't rec uh, read it, highly recommend it. It goes along. Now you know how to use really great images. If you can really make your words concise, here's what he does. Ready? Pretend this is a can of raid. I would like you to purchase this cylindrical metal can with a plastic tube down the middle filled with dioxide. Nobody talks like that, right? He helps you come up with kills bugs fast. That's all we care about. So highly, highly recommend that book. And you combine it with your images. Story Brand by Donald Miller. And then everything else you've learned over the course of this weekend, that SEO and all the other information that the speakers are giving you, you've got this. You're here to learn, to grow. You've got this. You can connect and engage that target audience. Yes? It should be updated next week. <laughs> He's really busy, so I'm going to have to like try to slide in there. <laughs> and then did you have the list of words that went along with the Yes, here's the list of, and this is actually on, I did make sure that at lunchtime I got this blog post up. Marion Davidson forward slash blog, it's like one of the recent three. Yep. Who here loves doing photography, taking pictures? Something that I actually thought about while standing here waiting for all of this. Next year, would y'all be willing to wake up early, unscheduled, not on the thing, and maybe do a photo walk to learn a little bit of photography? You've come all the way into town. Show of hands. OK, let's see if we can make that happen. There's a couple organizers in the room, so now that we know. Let's make that happen. Let's, let's learn to take better photos and be able to use them. All right, questions? Could you take it back to the last slide, Marianne, with all the questions? Yes. And one that I've added to this recently is my superpowers, because everybody likes that. Like, I don't know if you noticed, but on the Amazon slide, I had to slip in the May the 4th be with you yeah. on the Amazon. <laughs> What's your biggest struggle with making sure that you have photos? Is it time? Is it just the energy to do it? <laughs> Nobody's photogenic. But you have to get somebody that's going to, to help you because n nobody's naturally photogenic. You want to know why? Can we geek out for a moment? Here's why we're not photogenic. Think about this. Have you ever heard your voice? Do you like your voice? It's the acoustics of your brain. It makes you sound differently. What you actually hear is how you sound. Okay? When you look in the mirror, you're actually seeing a reflection of yourself, right? If you have a t-shirt on, all the words are backwards. That's what you're used to seeing since birth in the crib. You see a reflection over 100 times a day, so your brain is used to everything being completely the opposite of what it actually is in a photograph. That's why we can't connect with those images and think we're not photogenic. 
So if you take an image and you know, you've been there, your friends are like, I don't like this image of myself. And you're like, no, it's a really great image. It's because they're seeing a reflection. It's that, that voice problem. So if you take that image and actually mirror it, there's apps that you can do that, you will actually connect with your images. And then if you can get somebody to engage with you and actually get a genuine expression and not just say smile, you, you will, I promise, you would like the photos of yourself. Yeah, and body language and all of those little things. Yeah. You need one headshot. Think about it. If somebody's finding you in a cafe and you're wearing a bright yellow shirt with black stripes and then they're finding you, you know, your business card somewhere else and you look completely different, they want that familiarity. When somebody in a networking event says you should do business with this web designer, oh, I've seen them somewhere before. They must be good. You want that same headshot everywhere. There are variations, like we did Jason's, his was the blue shirt, which I actually photoshopped. He wore an orange short shirt, which real, looks really good on his Facebook. So we did keep it. Only one person has realized it's the exact same image with a different color <laughs> shirt. But you really want that same image. So take the time to get one really good image. It's really important. Yes, sir, you had your hand up. Yeah, do you recommend purging all of your previous images? No, your don't purge. And start over again? You know why you don't purge? It makes it overwhelming, okay. right? We eat our dinner one fork full at a time. You don't want to dump your entire plate into your belly at one time. It, it's, it really is overwhelming, and I do not recommend that to anybody. Start with your hero image. Start with your headshot. At least do those two. And then as you go back and repost those photos and change them out, just go through that checklist, you know? I personally have a private Facebook group. It's myself and nine others, so there's 10 of us. I've had it for years. The keynote speaker this morning said, somebody, find somebody that will tell you you're stupid. Yeah. That really resonated with me because before we post anything on social media or websites, I actually use it for my clients, like the two headshots that I had up. With her permission, I actually put them into that group and said, because those are two she chose. She's actually a veterinarian and an attorney. Talk about an amazing woman. Mm. She's a doctor and an attorney. Yeah. So find those couple of people that say, you should update this image, and then you should update this image. Just start with one. How are people finding you? Your headshot is everywhere. Your hero image is on your website. And then just start little pieces at a time. And then start from now by posting better images going forward. Does the headshot need to have a plain background, or can it have, you said you, know, you don't want distractions, but. You have less than a second. That's how our brains work. So for the hero image and things like that, you want that personality. You want that engagement. We actually did it with, um, for those, you, you, you really want a little bit of personality. You want people to linger. You notice he's actually leaning. His name of his company is leaning. It's the same as the logo. He's a Disney person. We made sure his personality is in there. But when you have that headshot and it's on LinkedIn and it's on Facebook and it's on and it's this little tiny oval, the plainer the background, the better. It doesn't have to be white. Who's your target audience? What is your branding? What is your colors? What are, really think about those. And then that's your, that's your plain background. But yes, you want to grab that attention and keep it on you. So if you are not using your personal social media for business purposes, how important do you feel it is to have that headshot on your personal Facebook, your personal Instagram, if you are not you know, friending business people in that way? So she asked, What's the difference between posting photos on your personal and your business? I have a personal Instagram account. I have a personal Facebook account that's not linked. Those are completely different photos. Think about it. That's a completely different target audience. That's your family and your friends. With every single thing you do, the first thing that you need to be asking is who's your target audience. And as long as they're not, I go to a lot of websites and they actually forget and they have the link to their Facebook, but it's not their business, it's their personal. So just check little things like that. You gotta show your personality though, even in your business photos, you know? So if you're taking really good images, <coughs> you're only gonna wanna post those, just those. But yes, you can have personal photos on your, on your personal. But know that employers have gotten really smart and they'll Google you. 
And I was sitting with some attorneys at the time. I usually go to the client's office and I'll wait all day just as people are coming out and get their images because I'm there on their time. And they were actually looking to hire somebody and I saw them, they were Googling people. While they can't hold that against you, people still do that. So you don't want those drinking photos like my poor husband. We actually reenacted link, actual LinkedIn photos, my poor husband, so that holding the drink, and that was an actual LinkedIn photo, so yeah. There was another question in the back. Okay. Marianne, it's very nice to see you again. Oh, it's nice to see you too. Thank you. Um, I have been a, a business and training coach the better part of 30 years. I'm a licensed or certified life coach as well. So when I'm dealing with a business owner who's getting started or somebody who's job changing, since I've done both of those things in my career, I am always reminding them how critical Facebook is to them. <coughs> a good example was a young lady, straight A student, greatest daughters from a high private college, and she went off on spring break, and they showed her in a wet t-shirt, along with a, a drink in her hand, and she had a job offer from multiple schools, and every one of them disappeared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Even though you think, well, my business life is very structured and I'm over-professional, everybody searches for who you are in the world today. 80% of people are going to research you online before making that decision. Before they ever, ever yeah. even call you. And they can even type in your phone number and yeah. find you everywhere. They can type in your email address and find you everything that pops up. I'm actually very careful about even who I friend on LinkedIn as a photographer that have those really bad images. I have found out that if I comment on or have friended them, if somebody Googles my name, their profile photos from LinkedIn actually pop up as part of mine. That's how powerful the internet is. Yeah. Yes. Can you give one tip for improving your photos? What would it be? Learn lighting. Natural light. Um, here's a good example. Let's see if everybody can see. See how dark my face is on this side? Three dollars from Walmart. Did my face just light up on that side? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just learn, learn lighting. The further into the room you go, the darker something is. Taking this and putting this in half, this is the size that it comes. I always cut it in half. If I'm taking a shot of a product, I set it down, I bounce light back into that, into that product. $3 will significantly improve. Walk over towards the light. If harsh light is coming in, shower curtain, sheer curtain, just diffuse that light, and then bounce light back into, let's see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you see the difference, say I'm dark? Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Product so, lighting. Product photos and product lighting. What would be some tips? What type of products? Industrial hoses. <laughs> <laughs> I actually worked with a box manufacturer recently. They make all the boxes for okay. any product you see at Home Depot, like little yeah. boxes of screws and stuff. So that's actually pretty exciting. Um, <laughs> So is just it in so a warehouse? It just so it doesn't look like everybody boxes. Right. Is okay. it in a warehouse? Yes. Open up the bay door. Yeah. Let some light come in. Bring it back where it's not harsh. You know, you take photos and you have like a bright white spot because the light yeah. is too harsh. Kind of bring it back and at least get that all important photo that you'll need for like Amazon or anything like that. And then who's your target audience? Um, hydraulic people right now. Can they sling it over their shoulder and maybe take a product photo showing like the guy with the, the thing on his shoulder because it's actually showing it in, in use? use. In use. Okay. What's its final, pro like what problem does it solve? Where is it at? What does it do? Uh, suction at, eh, suctioning water, discharging water as an example. It's like city streets or something like that? Yeah. So city street flooded and then go lay the hose with it dry and you've solved the problem you're showing the issue and how your product actually solved that problem 
if you need more help, grab a card. I'm an open book. You can text me. Well, I thought I did pretty well today with it going wonky, so. Um, <laughs> um, it just seems like the when you reduce the size. That's why we have that hero image, to make it really big. And you also want to make sure that the photo is going to look better smaller. So the one thing that I tell my clients with photography is once you get it up there and you decide it's kind of still hard to see, just take a step forward and take the photo again. Take a step forward, because as you get closer, that whatever that is is going to get bigger and bigger. Then you're really going to tell that story. Um, and then resize it a lot of times before you ever get it up there so that nothing goes awry. You can do that in your computers, all kinds. I'm not a tech person, but there's plenty of people in the room that would probably be able to tell you the different apps and software that will resize photos. Since I do it myself, I don't use those, but there's some really good do you know any the resized pictures? I'm going to put you on the this. Mark, do you know any of the resized photos before they ever get up to the? You could use something simple like Canva, as long as you know the dimensions. Spark. Adobe Spark. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's tons of them. There's ones even um, plugins in WordPress that will resize your photos for you and, and compress them and still keep them looking clean and crisp and not and a lot of times when people take pictures with their cell phones, they think that it's going to look good blown up as a billboard. It, it's not. That's why you really want to hire a professional if you need something really big. It's going to be blown up crisp and clear. Um, and then stabilize. If it's a little, just even like if you just take your phone, I don't know, a lot of you probably see me running around the camera all weekend. You'll see me, I'm always like up against the wall. I'm stabilizing myself. I'll even put the, even the camera up against the wall figure out a way to stabilize and make sure you're taking a photo that's clear. Well, I have professional photography, but they're, you know, high resolution. Resize them for the internet. Yeah, you want to resize them for the internet. And then when you talk with your web person, they'll know the size of that box that is there. You want to go ahead and have it sized for that box, but you still want to keep the original in case you decide to use it somewhere else. And then the great part of having images and not wasting your time is you can repurpose that. That can become a Facebook banner. That can be this place. You can crop it. You can zoom in. And the little piece of it can be something else. So when you have the high resolution images, you can do that. Yep. Mary Ellen, one of my favorite questions to ask is give everybody one, two, or three questions they should ask before they hire a professional. How do they know if the person's not the right person besides the personality issues? When you call the photographer, do they ask you questions? It's all about you. When somebody calls me and they say, I need images for my website, the very first question I ask them is, who is your target audience? Because I want to make sure that I'm capturing that, not just throwing you up against the wall and taking your picture. Who's your target audience? Do you need to lean forward? Do you need to be the, the judge that is stoppable? Do you, you know, figuring out who your target audience is. So when you call a photographer, if they don't ask you questions, they're really not going to do right for your business. And then, that's a good question, because I'm usually the one usually asking all the questions when somebody calls me. So I usually say, who is your target audience? What is your branding? What are your words? And let's make sure we're capturing that either in your products or in your images with people. Can you say something about mirroring apps? Like so you can probably type in, in an iPhone um, mirror image, and it will flip. And if you have an image you want me to mirror, we've got about two hours before the after party. You can text it to me, and I'll flip it, and you can look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any resources that you use to, well, or that you would suggest for us to um, grade the images that we're uh, like putting on our site, or grading the site for image optimization? Grading. Grading, like make sure we have like checklists. Yeah. So. Or, in other words, tell us how we're doing with what we what we've used already. Or would we have to do it separately, like break it down by, was, like you said, there was a tool for stock images. 
or somebody yeah, you can right click on stock photo online and, and do a Google search or 10i and it will tell you at all the other places that it's available on the internet. Before you use any image, you just want to go through that checklist because again, what resonates with your target audience might not resonate with my target audience. So I can't say what's going to work or not work for you. Like I said, the buck stops with you. You have to decide who your target audience is. Is that image going to work for you? Yeah, but for some of what I'm doing, I'm not in control of the entire part of the site being built. So I'm just wondering. Who's in control? Uh, the companies that I work for. OK. Can you sit down and have a meeting with them and explain to them? And hmm, I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. With, but maybe there's a way around it. Maybe you can show them a really bad photo and then show them a really good photo. Maybe you could take the Clint Eastwood photo and say, what do, you, what do you say when you look at this image? What do you see? What do you see when you look at the stock photo? Because what if I had come in here and just immediately said, when's the last time you judged something based on how it looks? No hand would have gone up, right? So maybe if you just like show them a couple of images and say, here's what our site can look like. Show, yeah. Anybody else? One more. Can you put your information up one more time, please? Thank you. You're welcome. One more question. One more question. Yes. Uh, yes. How do you, when you're shooting for like a company's uh, photos for their website, how do you figure out what type of pictures to take for the company? Is it like a plan or do you just freestyle it with the location? No, I sit down with them and I brainstorm with them. Okay. So again, who's your target audience? I check out their website and I look to see what's not working and what is. As soon as I know who their target audience is, who their, you know, what is their branding, what are their words, what it is they're wanting to convey to the world, and then I have them do this, and then I'm able to, I have to climb inside their head. I, that's my job. I have to climb inside their head and help them figure out how they can connect with and engage their target audience. But figuring out who their target audience is, like the photo, you know, the book editor, the attorney, like both were good images, but which is going to be right for your company? So figuring out those little details is really, really, really important. Yeah. I'm seriously, we have a couple hours before the, we can go out in the lobby if you need to ask me some specific questions. Does it do you have to pretty start at six? Or yeah. I think it's, it's six. I think it's six. So it's one hour. Okay. I'm here all weekend and I'll be at the happiness bar too. So thank you all everybody for coming. Hug.